All right. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. Good night, wherever you are. Uh, I'm going to show you the new updated planetary live stacking in SharpCap 4.0. This is evolving very quickly, so I'm updating my tutorials. Uh, this one dropped on the 27th of November, and it has some awesome new features, and I'm going to show them to you. So we're going to open up SharpCap 4.1. By the way, if you want to do this, if you don't have SharpCap, you need to have SharpCap. It is amazing for all kinds of things. It's amazing for planetary imaging. But it's also amazing for lunar imaging. It's amazing for uh, deep sky imaging. It's amazing for deep sky live stacking. Now it's amazing for planetary live stacking. Uh, you can do polar alignment with it. It is you, it has a built-in plate solver that is blazingly fast, faster than any other plate solver you will find by a lot. It's it's good. Um, but if you want to uh, download SharpCap, it's uh, at uh, www.sharpcap.co.uk slash sharpcap slash downloads. And this is the latest version, 4.1.11388.0. Again, November 27th. Okay, let's jump into it. I am going to demonstrate this. Uh, you might notice behind me it looks like it's daylight. It is. I don't have any planets uh, right now to look at, so I'm going to use some recorded footage. I'm going to show you how to do that yourself. If you already have some captured SER files, SER, if you're into planetary imaging, you know what that is. If you're not, don't worry about it. Go to Cameras and go to test camera to the high speed camera. And this is gonna bring up the default test image of uh, Jupiter. That's a still image, fully post-processed. But I'm gonna go over here to the right to testing controls, browse, and I'm gonna choose a SIR file that I have recorded. Technically, this is the SIR file that I recorded and this I rotated in PIP because it was rotated by 90 degrees and I wanted to have Jupiter showing his uh, his uh, best face. So I rotated it in PIP. So this is as Jupiter would look live in my telescope. And this is actually pretty good. This is decent seeing. It's not the best I've had, but it's pretty good. Jupiter is only wiggling a little bit. It's a little fuzzy. It's kind of washed out. You can see this is Europa over here. So this is pretty good, but um, due to a few things, uh, diffraction from the finite uh, aperture which bends and spreads out the light, uh, the seeing, which is atmospheric turbulence, which is causing all this wiggling and blurring that you see. Um, you can have problems with transparency where thin clouds pass in front of uh, your target. Um, it kind of uh, limits the quality that you're looking at here. Another, another problem with these, uh, they're called OSC one-shot color astronomy cameras is that they don't produce particularly vivid colors uh, immediately. The, the same is actually true of your DSLR, your, uh, your phone camera, your mirrorless cameras. They all need a little help. They need a little post-processing to not wash out the colors. And the same is true of these astronomy cameras. So you can see Jupiter has some color, but it's not the best in the world. Um, so we're going to see if we can use SharpCap to make this image of Jupiter better. So I'm going to go to Tools, Planetary Live Stacking. By the way, I do want to mention this is a SharpCap Pro feature. You can use this feature without the Pro license, but it would have a watermark on it. That's okay. Uh, you can test it out and see how it works for you. It, trust me, it's going to be amazing. Um, and the SharpCap Pro license is extremely cheap. It is the best money I have ever spent in astronomy. Uh, highest value for dollars or pounds or euros or whatever you uh, have, it's the best money you can spend in astronomy is on a SharpCap Pro license, just for the polar alignment alone. I'll show you that in another video sometime. So live planetary stacking and enhancement. So the first thing that you're going to notice is Jupiter immediately freezes. Um, it that doesn't mean that it's not live updating because it is, it's still live updating. You can see right here that it's updating the display 20 times a second almost. Um, so what 
is going on here is this image is being stacked to stabilize it. So by default here, actually, I'm not sure if this is the default. It's just what I set it on at this, to begin this video. It's stacking up 100 frames. Um, and that means it's averaging 100 frames. And you get this nice, still image, right? But we can do better than this. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to show you this section in here called the Gaussian Wavelet Sharpening. Ooh, and this is magical stuff. So wavelet processing is a measure, is a way to, um, uh, to sharpen the image, and it does it in layers. So the first layer is the smallest scale in the image. Second layer, layer is the next largest scale of features in the image. Third layer is a larger scale than that. Fourth layer is a larger scale than that. So we're just going to take this first layer here and sort of dial it up. And you can see already that Jupiter is, we're starting to bring out some features in Jupiter. Let's leave it something like that. And then maybe we'll turn this up like that. And these scales are logarithmic, by the way, if you know what that means. If you don't, don't worry about it. Uh, and I have found to my taste that this sort of equally spaced staggered configuration sort of works the best for me. You, you can do whatever you like. Um, uh, of course it's easy. You, you can, you can blow it out. You can make artifacts. So it's a matter of going too far and then pulling it back and figuring out, you know, where's this sweet spot that I like. And it's, it's subjective. It's up to you. And so this is already nice. I can see a lot more features. Jupiter is stable. Uh, I can see a lot more features. I do want to show you this. Um, well, we'll talk about this in a second. Uh, one thing you'll notice is as I turn up the sharpening, I start to see some noise. That's That results uh, from the sharpening. But what I can do is actually just stack more frames. Instead of stacking 100 frames, well, let's stack 1,000 frames. And you can see immediately that the stack length starts to climb up. As sharp length, uh, as sharp length, as sharp gap uh, starts to increase the stack depth, and uh, you'll notice all that noise is kind of fading away. And you can actually put this. The stack length goes all the way up to uh, eighty-one ninety-two, I believe. You do want to be careful uh, with your stack length because if you stack enough frames, you'll start to see motion. You'll start to see blurring from motion blur. So Europa here would start to get elongated, uh, things like that. So um, I have found that uh, a stack length of one to 2,000 frames, depending on your focal ratio, if you're if your focal ratio is longer, your image is dimmer and noisier, and maybe you want to stack some more frames. But one to 2,000 frames seem to work really well for me on everything that I've tested, and I don't get a lot of motion blur uh, out of that. Um, and of course, um, what that um, ter corresponds to in actual imaging time is going to be dependent on your exposure. Um, so when I recorded this, I was using a pretty long exposure by planetary standards. It was um, 30 frames per second. A lot of people will image Jupiter at 100 frames per second or 150. Uh, it's up to you. I do want to point out for you imagers that are trying to record high, uh, make high-speed captures, this tool does not interfere with that. So you can capture uh, at at high speed while also enjoying the live view. It's really fantastic. Okay, so this is looking this is looking nice. Uh, let's come back now to the have wavelet scales. So what this does, it's a pretty clever thing. It actually takes your image under the hood, uh, scales it up by a factor of two, and then applies the wavelets, and then scales it back down again. Uh, and that just gives you a little finer control. It seems to work better on some uh, images. It's up to you to play around and figure out where it is. So if I were to click this on, you'll see Jupiter in, in the short term looks worse, but let's just sort of crank this up again and maybe do something like this. And we're starting to get up there. Some people would say this is sharpened too hard. You can see that I've got some uh, edge ringing going on here, but uh, I like to see things. So the next thing I'm going to show you is um, we can clean this up even more because you can see I've got ringing around the edge of the planet. I've got ringing around Europa. 
you can see I need to touch my collimation up a little bit, which is another fantastic thing you can use this tool for. You can use it for focusing. You can use it for checking your collimation. You can use it for adjusting your collimation. It's amazing. But I'm going to go to my display stretch, which is still live. Uh, and I'm just going to move my black point up. Uh, and I'm just going to clip out that ringing that you see. Right? So that's all gone. The background's nice and clean. And the next thing I'm going to do is I want to increase my contrast here a little bit so I can see the features a little better. And instead of trying to do that by increasing the sharpening, all I have to do is take my midpoint of my uh, display histogram stretch and sort of move it to the right. And, that, and I don't have to go very far. It just kind of increases my, uh, my contrast. And you can see I've, I've got a little noise here. Uh, I think that's associated with having my wavelet scales. So... Again, I'm just going to go in here, oh, sorry for the bang on the microphone, and up that to 2000. And a sharp cap immediately starts increasing the stack depth. And again, I want to point out this is live. This is a live updating image. Uh, by the way, they have wavelet scales. Uh, it does take some extra processing power to do that. So you can see my display update rate fell from almost 20 frames per second to about 7 frames per second. But the beauty is, it is so stable, it looks like a still image. Uh, you can't tell the difference between 7 frames per second and 20 frames per second. You really cannot. It's, it's unbelievable. Um, okay, but we can do even better than this. We haven't done anything about the, uh, the washed out colors from having uh, an astronomy camera. So uh, that's where I'm going to go into here, and I'm just going to increase the saturation. I'm going to just grab this guy and turn him up. And again, this is a matter of taste. You can go as high as you want. I, I can go all the way. I like going, uh, I like going hot. I like seeing colors. But you can see that uh, we've started to get a, a global sort of red tinge going on here to Jupiter. Uh, but we can fix that because we have uh, actually adjustments to our uh, our color channels. Normally, you set your white balance on the way in for planetary imaging. I Some people will just leave the white balance of whatever it is, and they'll record a green Jupiter. I don't like to do that. I like to set my white balance as close as I can to get as neutral an image on the way in as I can, because then it's easier to fix in post. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to uh, bump up the green a little bit. Oh, too far. Got to let it respond. Take it down, take it down, take it down now. Something like that. I like it. I like it a lot. I got nice white bands. I've got that golden hue. Uh, in this uh, northern uh, temperate zone just above the equator. That's one of the color uh, richness cues that I look for. Is there, uh, at least these days, there's a slight change in color between this sort of golden region and this whiter region, and it, the change occurs right at the uh, equator. So we've got a beautiful red spot. We've got lots of uh, lots of details going on. On Jupiter, I've got a little noise, maybe a little much. There, back it off a little bit. So that's that's a really beautiful thing. Another thing that you can do is uh, you can adjust the brightness, just the global brightness with this control right here. So I, if you're a little hot, you can make it dimmer. If your uh, uh, exposure or gain is a little low, you can brighten the image up here. One thing that I've found this is uh, can be nice uh, for is if the sharpening starts to blow out the moon you can turn the brightness down and recover your your moon back so it's not all blown out um, so this uh, I can't stress to you enough this this is amazing this is amazing um, just to remind you there's a show unprocessed frames here this is what it would look like without this tool. And this is what it looks like with the tool. It looks like a photograph out of an astronomy textbook. It's just amazing. It is absolutely amazing. And this is, is a global uh, button for turning off the wavelets as well. 
And you can see this is without sharpening and this is with sharpening. It's just amazing. So the next tab we have is frame filtering. Um, and what this allows you to do is uh, only stack up uh, a subset of the frames. So right now I am stacking 80% uh, of frames and that is based on the statistics of the last 250 frames here. You can set both of these. You can turn this filtering off if you like. It's up to you. Uh, at some point in the future, there will be um, a scrolling quality measure graph. You can see that the that SharpCab is actually measuring the quality of every input frame that gets stacked. And at some point, there will be a uh, a quality graph that shows you what's happening to the quality over time. And uh, my hope is that there will be a sorted version of that graph as well, just like in AutoStackert. Um, and that will uh, allow you to make judgments about, well, what percentage of frames do you want to stack? Do you want to stack 80% of the frames, 90% of the frames? Do you want to, is the seeing kind of poor and variable and you only want to stack half the frames or a quarter of the frames or 10% of the frames? You'll have the ability to, to uh, do that. The next thing you can do here, um, by the way, at any point you can just write this image out uh, as you see it uh, as a PNG. So you can just save that and share it on Facebook and you're good to go. Sorry for the pop there. Um, the other thing you can do is write a time lapse. You can directly write this as an AVI video. You can choose the interval for how often a frame is saved. Uh, you can also write it as, um, you can write it as a SIR video. I don't see a lot of use in that. Um, SIR videos are really for uh, high quality post-processed stacked post stacked images um, and uh, so if I did a capture of the raw frames of what's going on here you know up here then uh, I would use sir video but I'm not going to use it from my time lapse I'm going to save an AVI video so I can share it directly with my friends or maybe if I want to do some post-processing which um, at the moment, I still like to do some post-processing. I'll use uh, PNG images. And then you just start the time lapse, and it just starts writing. So frame just went out. Ten, ten seconds later, another frame will go out. One of the reasons I still like to do a little uh, post-processing on this is currently the frames written to the time lapse do not include the display stretch. And um, I really like to get that display stretch in because it helps you clean this up. If I were to turn off my display stretch, let me just stop this time lapse. If I were to turn off this display stretch, you can see I've got that ringing. The image is much brighter, which maybe some people like that. Um, I like the increased contrast, but you can see this ringing and it's just kind of needs to be cleaned up a little bit. So currently the display stretch is not included in the time lapse. I hope that is coming. I have requested it uh, in a uh, gentle but strongly worded fashion. <laughs> but uh, right now it's not. So I actually use uh, WaveSharp. My phone is ringing, sorry. Spam risk. I actually use WaveSharp, which is a fantastic uh, image processing tool that's under development by the uh, the guy who wrote Registax, if you're familiar with that. Um, and I do my batch processing of my PNG frames here uh, uh, to apply the, uh, the black level clipping and a little bit of inverse gamma to increase the, the contrast. I do that in post with WaveSharp and then uh, assemble the result either as an animated PNG directly in WaveSharp, or I write the frames back out and as, uh, assemble uh, an AVI or, or an animated GIF or whatever in PIP. Okay. And uh, maybe some other time I'll show you exactly how to do this, but I'm running a bit long right now. So I'm going to leave it there. This is planetary live stacking in SharpCap where you can go from this to this. Thank you for watching.